Welcome back everyone to another cyber hack video. Today I'm going to be going over statistics and also what certification are out there that cyber professionals are taking so they can land a high paying job, right? So we're going to go over some of the details. I have two sites up right now and I'll share that with you. Actually, it's in the description already. So I want to go over a few things because it's pretty interesting. You have to know these things if you're going to target something very specific, right? You basically have to do your homework, your due diligence, so you can actually target and manipulate the data that you have or manipulate the surrounding or the information that you have to use it to your advantage. So this is what we're going to go through today. So right now I'm at CyberSeek. And what is CyberSeek? CyberSeek, cybersecurity talent gaps exist across the country. Closing these gaps require detailed knowledge of the cybersecurity workforce in your region. So you have to look and see how many vacancies for cybersecurity on this map, right? If you guys are in the United States, if you guys are outside the country, that exists as well. Now, I'm not too familiar with the international market, but for the United States, it's pretty, you know, right here. It's all here, right? It's pretty much it. Um, so there's a couple of links here and we're going to go through some of this stuff and you can see like, wow, look at this cybersecurity career training, bachelor degrees, and they're pinpointing it as you're scrolling in and you're focusing more. So we're going to do a little more stuff in, in the United, well, this is the United States, more in the New York, New Jersey area, because that's where I am. Maybe you hear it in my accent, maybe not. But anyway, let's go back to the interactive map. I want to go over some high level stuff right total job openings and you can see right here every state is going to list out the, the the number of actual jobs now this is going to be a very broad range of jobs and it's not going to be detailing out every single job that's out there you know some of them by the time you see this a lot of these positions or maybe none of these positions may be even filled right and they're probably still interviewing or the budget changed or something happened so can you imagine let's let's take this for example i know this is very controversial and i'm just going to use it as an example let's just say right Bud light was like the number one biggest selling beer in the entire country right and because of whatever issues they went through they lost a lot of jobs right well, well they lost a lot of revenue which equate to losing jobs and people who were delivering the, the the merchandise and people who were you know making the merchandise I, I i read to a point where you know truck drivers the people who were bottling the the bear lost a lot of jobs so can you imagine that will obviously because of the revenue and it's going to trickle back down right so these the it positions or the cybersecurity jobs that were within that uh organization probably has diminished as well meaning it, it went down to a lower level of employees uh you know individuals have having to take more roles because they had to let go or you know whatever the case is now that could happen to a lot of these organizations right it, it, you know it can be prosperous one day and then the next day they did something wrong they made a bad trade uh you know and the, and the company just goes bankrupt right overnight and that's not an uncommon thing nowadays right a lot of companies and corporations really do file for bankruptcies out of nowhere sometimes uh so unfortunately you have to deal with that, those situations but for the most part anyone who's posting a job is probably more you know hopefully that they're more stable anyway let's get into this right now I said that I was going to focus on New York and New Jersey. So New Jersey has about 16,000 only because it's, you know, geographically closer to me if I was to opt and go look for a new position. And within New York, there's 27,000 job openings. Now, that's a big range, right? So we have to focus on total employee cybersecurity workforce, national 2023, over a million of them. Okay. And of course, if you want explanation, you can click on the uh, information I little circle shows the estimate number of workers employed in cybersecurity related jobs from May 2022 to through April 2023. So that's pretty interesting. There's a lot of jobs now focused on cybersecurity. Now, the total cybersecurity job openings total national across the whole board is 663. So, you know, there, there's a lot of positions to be filled but it really has to depend on 
what kind of positions are these, right? They're just generalizing cybersecurity now because cybersecurity is a very broad term nowadays. So let's go over some of the stuff which is probably more interesting to you guys and you would want to know more. Like you, you, you go on YouTube and you've probably seen YouTube videos where like these are the top certifications or you Google on, uh, you know, for what's the top certifications in cybersecurity and what makes the most money. So here it goes. Um, certification holders. Oh, these are the certification holders. And then we're going to compare it to the opening requesting certifications from companies looking for a particular certifications. So Security Plus, it's a pretty standard certification nowadays. Uh, pretty common. Uh, that that was like the, it will start your basis off of your comprehension of security, right? Now, even though there's a lot of people holding this particular one, the CISSP, with 91,000 certificate holders or certification holders, unfortunately, there you, you have to have a requirement for CISSP where you have to have X amount of years of experience, I believe, which is five years of experience. And a lot of people who are taking some, you know, some of them who are taking this exam may not even qualify for that. And you have to kind of get the associate. So you're not fully CISSP, but you pass the exam until you qual until you satisfy all the other requirements. Then you become a full fledged CISSP. That's I think that's where the, the differences come in, where non experience and experience. But even though you have a certification that says you have experience, but you don't have the experience kind of confusing, isn't it? So. CISSP, uh, and then we have a couple other ones going down the list. Uh, these are the ISACA ones. These are combined CISA and CISM. And then uh, CIP-P, uh, Certified Information Privacy Professionals. So a very low count there. And th the privacy professionals usually are not the very technical aspect of cybersecurity. Those are the, you know, the policy side, uh, the paper side, the paper pushers of cybersecurity. I hate to use that term, but it is true. That's what they do. So opening requesting certifications. A lot of corporations are looking for the CISSP. And good news for the entry level guys. Security Plus is trailing a little bit behind. Not too far. A little give or take 10,000 difference between CISSP and Security Plus. So does that mean all the other certifications below this is probably not even worth your time. Not entirely true. Not entirely true because from my experience so far, I have seen a lot of companies, postings for jobs have always listed out multiple certifications. It's always one or the other. Not you don't necessarily need to have all of them because it you know i actually financially it just doesn't make sense sometimes because remember not only do you have to pay for these certifications if you're not employed from a, someone that's willing to pay it for you you have to maintain them as well meaning you have to earn these credits every year and you have to pay a membership fee and they're not you know through time it just adds up and i've been paying my membership fee it's it's, it's expensive it gets expensive uh just to hold a piece of paper to get you through the door for hr Right. Because as you're in the employment, if you're already working, most companies be like, OK, you got a certification. You still need to do certain things, do your work, whatever. Right. The certification, in my opinion, for the times that I've worked for different organizations, did not really matter as much as it getting me into the door for a interview or, you know, passing HR. Right. So one interesting thing here is that I've noticed a lot of companies also list CEH is actually not listed here. And that's from the uh, EC console, which is the certified ethical hacker. I actually don't see it here. So that's pretty interesting. So does that mean it's not required or you shouldn't even consider it? That's all up to you. I'm not going to say, you know, there's a bad certification or there's a good one, but you can see for yourself. Now, these are statistics. These are numbers that were done from last year till now, which is pretty frequently, you know, pretty frequent and pretty up to date these are the top certifications i know i know there's plenty more out there right let's just say you're going for cybersecurity in pen testing they're not listing the oscp here right but that's also not a com very common certification that's very niche and uh, most of these certifications here that we're seeing 
Security Plus and CISFT and uh, CISM, they're very vendor neutral. They're very like, you know, just very open to you understanding the concept of cybersecurity and they're not drilling down to specific tools, specific vendors, or, you know, they're not talking about Microsoft. They're not talking about like the move it breach that just happened recently. So they're very vendor neutral. So that's why these certifications are actually here uh, opposed to, uh, but then again, the CEH is probably should, I think it's also neutral, but I think they use a lot of tools in there that are very specific. So anyway, Let's go over some of the high level stuff, right? And we career path, skills and certifications. And this is where you would find out, right? Besides going like the interactive map, besides you finding out in your state, how many jobs you can use this to your advantage by going on to other job sites now. And then you kind of have an idea if you went on to like Indeed or LinkedIn or Monster and you start searching by the state, right? And then you have a general idea how many jobs are out there in this category. And you can start filtering it by uh, advanced level, mid-level and beginner level positions, all right? So career path, we're gonna go to uh, entry level cybersecurity specialist, right? And then you have your cybersecurity analyst. This is very interesting. The, the interactiveness uh, of this and also estimating the average salary. Now, average salary also depends on what state you're coming from, right? Some mid state where the cost of living is lower, the, the pay is actually a little less in comparison if you were living in a major metropolitan uh, city, right? Comparing New York and California. So you got those two spectrums of East Coast, West Coast. And if you're living in one of those and you find a job, and I've seen it in job listings that, you know, compensation will be based on the state that you're living in, uh, especially for remote positions. Because if you're living in, let's just say, Indiana, um, and you find a remote job, the position salary range is a little different, and it may be a little bit lower than what they will offer if you were living in New York. So they're basically trying to compensate for the cost of living as well. Now that doesn't apply to every company, but I have seen that. And it's pretty interesting how they start, you know, dividing that up, right? So can you lie and say, no, I, I live in New York. And then you have, you use your cousin's address. I'm not saying that you should, but I don't know. They can possibly do background checks and find out where you live and where you reside, right? Okay, so we're not even gonna go that route. Um, Cybercrime analyst, 90K. Uh, in incident and intrusion analyst, 85K. An IT auditor makes 105,000. So, you know, you, you, you can go here to see what these entry level positions for cybersecurity makes and also your mid level right here. So these are, I mean, those are averages. May, maybe if you find something, you probably, let's just say if you were an incident responder for cybersecurity and you were entry level, you possibly could make more than this because they're averaging. You have to remember they're averaging. So don't take these numbers to heart and say, oh, that's all I'm going to be able to make. And that's the max I can make. Um, sorry, I wasn't even sharing my screen. So right here, cybersecurity specialist, again, is 106,000. Cybersecurity specialist, the term is very broad, all right? So specialist meaning you're probably going to be working with firewalls. You're going to be working with endpoint solutions, DLP, some networking components of it, and it's very diversified. And you're going to probably touch a little bit of everything. Uh, cyber crime analyst is probably going to be a little more specific. You're going to be doing a lot of forensic work. And again, like I said earlier, the averages are not, don't take these numbers to heart because averages can be a very low average compared with a mixed in with a very high salary. So very low salaries and very high salary becomes averages, right? Uh, so you can have someone making like 60K plus someone who's making 100K or 120K and you're averaging out to a medium of these prices here. Well, I say prices, but salaries here. IT auditors, 105,000. So I'm probably... In the mid, I, I would say I'm in the mid level side of it and I'm not a pen tester. So maybe I'm in advanced level because my average, I'm above. All right. So I, I was actually categorized as a cybersecurity engineer architect. Um, so I would say I'm in this range. I'm in, I'm definitely in this range because uh, even though my 
this average is lower than what I'm actually making. And if you guys are really interested in what I'm making, uh, comment below. And I may be able to share that with you one day. <laughs> so anyway, uh, education and trading providers. This is a very interesting. You guys have to do your research, right? You just have to find out where the hell are the jobs? Where is it that they're looking for remote jobs and you potentially can start focusing in that area? Or a lot of companies are starting to bring back employees into the office or hybrid. So you use these tools, right? You have to use them in order to gain an advantage. Some guys would just willy nilly go on LinkedIn. And, oh, I see jobs here and there and like, oh, but what I actually do, uh, you know, Micron started developing a new uh, facility in upstate New York. I started doing the research on that. They, were, they said that they were going to hire out like this is a 10 year plan. They were going to hire out uh, you know, thousands of jobs. I'm not just talking about cybersecurity, but of course that's going to all be mixed in. So, you know, not only the, the, the corporations are building out and expanding, and this is all, you know, Micron microchips bringing, you know, jobs back into the United States. It's going to be crazy. So maybe this is participating in that, right? Because I know for a fact, upstate New York and around Syracuse, uh, right here, this area, Utica, this is where the Micron area is going to be. So they, they're, coming back so um you know maybe potentially if you're interested in that you could start researching it you just have to plan ahead right uh, just like chess you have to think ahead move your pieces accordingly do your homework do your research and that's how you're gonna be on top of everyone else right um i'm gonna share with you guys some of the things this is very high level stuff where you're looking for jobs and cybersecurity in general but when you start coming down and filtering down to an organization and you know that they're looking for talent you could find ways to maximize on that as well i've gotten to i sat through an interview where they said that i was very ambitious and i looked up everything about the cio or the CISO. And they, they were on YouTube. I watched everything about them. And I, and I just brought that onto the table during the interview. And they were shocked. They were like, wow, you, you really do your homework. And I was like, hell yeah. All right. So uh, that's pretty much it for today. This is a very interesting site. Um, and I'm happy to share it with you because it's public information. Uh, and you guys should definitely utilize this stuff. Not every YouTuber is going to tell you these things because they just want to tell you what you want to hear. But, you know, some of these things you you really have to do some more homework on your own and what was the point of all this video is statistics right you want to see what what's going on uh cyber security jobs you know I, i'm getting these stats you can see these stats you know what's going on and that's how you're going to be able to be able to be on top of everyone else right because you know things you know this information you know that if you went out to look for a job right now you know what numbers are there you have one out of 663,000 chances of landing a cybersecurity job. And that's my point. All right. I want to, again, thank you guys for being here. Please remember to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And enjoy you guys interacting and comment below. Uh, ask me anything and I'll address it to the best of my knowledge. Thank you guys. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.